There's an awful lot that cooking eggs can teach you about cooking. If cooking is the application of heat to food, then eggs as a particularly delicate food will tell you if you get it right or if you get it wrong. As one quick example, if you cook a custard right, it comes out sensual and creamy. Get it wrong and it comes out pitted and curdly and weepy and not very nice at all. I've got some eggs right here, and what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about how I chose them. I picked them up at the store, and you can see a, a broad selection of colors. Color is not an indication of quality. Color is an indication of breed. So uh, if you like brown eggs, by all means, buy brown eggs. Um, these are commercial eggs. These are farm eggs. What I looked for when I got to the store is the expiration date that was on the container. I think it's really important to know that quality in eggs is all about freshness. So check the expiration date and buy as far into the future as you possibly can. When you've chosen a carton of eggs, open it up and take a look and make sure there's no eggs that are cracked or broken. That's kind of important because they can start to spoil. If you have any cracked or broken eggs, put this one back on the shelf. If when you get home you have cracked or broken eggs, just take them and discard them. That's the safest thing. So we've got the eggs home now. First thing you want to do is put them right into the refrigerator. Eggs have been designed by nature to keep at room temperature. Otherwise, there'd be chickens sitting on spoiled eggs. But the white will begin to degrade a little bit over time. So it goes from being very viscous and clinging to the yolk to becoming more watery and spreading. Uh, take a look here. I have an egg that has been around at room temperature for a couple of days. And I'm going to put it onto the plate. And then here's a fresh one that I brought from the store. You can see here how the white is clinging more closely to the yolk. Here the white has spread a good deal more. You can see that the yolk here is beginning to spread. And it's apparent to me, if not to you, that this yolk is a little bit darker, fuller in color. Uh, I don't have a lot of watery whites on this egg the way I do over here. This is just a better quality egg. Now, let me set these aside. What I'll tell you is that when you buy eggs, sometimes they will be graded. So you'll see a grading. It may be la uh, labeled grade AA. Grading is done when the eggs are packed. So if the time they leave the packing shed to the time they get to you, they've been mishandled, a good quality or a good grade egg doesn't really mean anything unless it's been handled properly. So take the grading with a grain of salt. If it's there, it's not a bad thing, but you want eggs that are fresh, fresh, fresh. All right, let's get started cooking. What I want to do is hard boil some eggs for you. And I'm going to turn this heat up. I'm going to take some of these eggs, and what I want to do is lower them right into cool water. Now, be a little bit careful. You don't want to crack the eggs when you put them in. OK. Now that they're in the water, I'm going to bring that water up to a boil. There may be a little bit of confusion, and that is that we call these hard-boiled eggs. I'm going to bring them to one boil, and then I'm going to turn the heat down as low as I can get it. And if they can be covered by at least two inches of water, so much the better. When they come up to that first boil and I turn them down, the clock starts ticking. For a large egg, like the eggs I have in here, I would count 12 minutes and then take them out and put them into ice water. If it were an extra large egg, I might go all the way up to 14 minutes. And for a medium egg, maybe down to 10. So does size matter? Uh, in terms of quality, freshness matters, not size. But all the recipes that you read in cookbooks will usually call for a large or an extra large egg. All right. What I have here is some eggs that have been cooked, hard boiled, brought to the first boil, and then turned down very, very low. At 12 minutes, we took them out, and we stopped the cooking by putting them right into ice water. OK? So the cooking has stopped. I'm going to bring them over here and put them into uh, another bowl of water. When I peel eggs, what I like to do is peel them at the sink 
and let the water flow between the shell and the egg. But we don't have a sink here, so let me do it this way. We'll crack them and then bring them right in. And as soon as you begin to peel away the shell, what will happen is the water will begin to flow between the shell and the egg, and it should separate pretty easily. I will tell you that fresh eggs are sometimes a little bit more difficult to peel, but these are doing just fine. It's worth closing your eyes and just feeling for shells. You may not see it because it's white on white, but you'll feel it for sure. So I'll set that aside. Here's another. These are great for adding to salads. You know, it makes a really terrific healthy snack to have some hard-boiled eggs on hand. And I'm going to show you a little trick in just a second so that you can distinguish between hard-boiled eggs and raw eggs. So you go to the refrigerator and you're looking for a hard-boiled egg. You take this and you don't know if it's hard-boiled. You take this, you don't know if it's hard-boiled. And I'll even mix them up for myself. We'll put them back on the board. If you take it and spin it, if it's hard-boiled, it will spin really well, just like that. That's because the white on the inside and the yolk as well are firm. Take the raw egg and spin it, and it will not spin. You can see it doesn't like to. So we'll set those aside. I'm going to take and cut these eggs in half with a sharp knife. And I'll show you what we have here. It's maybe important now that this has come to a boil just to turn it down as low as I can get it. I actually don't even have a problem if you turn it all the way off. As long as you've covered the, the, the eggs with at least two inches of water, there's enough heat there to, to cook them. All right, back over here. Let's take a look. The yolk is set but still moist. And if you've ever eaten an overcooked hard-boiled egg, it's dry, dry, dry. The white is set, but it's not rubbery. So it's set, but it's cooked very, very gently. Um, this, I would say, is just about ideal. If you don't like that little bit of moisture there, then add an extra minute. If you want them a little bit more moist, subtract a minute. Now I'm going to make some deviled eggs from the eggs that, that we've just cooked. Um, it's an easy thing to slip the yolks right out of the whites. You want to make sure not to break the whites because that's going to be the container that holds the filling. There we go. First thing we're going to do is mix in some mayonnaise. We want to mix this until the, the yolks have broken down and we're looking for something that has a nice creamy consistency, not too dry. Now, of course, we have to season it. And so in goes a little bit of salt. I'm not going to put pepper in this time because some, some people would say little flecks of black pepper really make this unattractive. Instead, what I'm going to do is add some Tabasco and that will give us the peppery flavor that we're looking for. I want to add some mustard to cut through the richness of this preparation. So we'll stir the mustard in. And then if you like a nice savory flavor, maybe just a little splash of Worcestershire. It's as simple as that. You could add other herbs if you wanted. You could add basil, you could add chopped up tomato. Some people like horseradish in their, uh, their hard-boiled eggs. Uh, I'm gonna put some chives, not in here, but on top. And that way they'll show and it'll look very nice. Uh, you don't have to pipe these eggs. You can instead take uh, a little spoonful of this filling and just spoon it into the eggs. Alternately, you can take all of that filling and put it into a little Ziploc bag 
and just cut the tip off of the bag. And then you can use this as a pastry bag to pipe in some filling. If you've got a proper pastry bag and you like the looks of, of a fluted appearance to the filling, you can put a star tip in there. I'm going to take and put some chives on the top of each. It's just a nice contrasting color. And these should go right into the refrigerator, or alternately, they should go right onto a plate and be served. So there you have it, hard-boiled eggs. This is really egg cookery 101. When we come back, we're going to make something a little more exalted, poached eggs with hollandaise. Everybody likes to eat eggs benedict for brunch, but nobody's brave enough to make them at home. Today, I'm going to try and give you a little bit of courage. We're going to make eggs benedict, and we need to start by making hollandaise sauce. Hollandaise needs a flavorful reduction, and so let's get that in the pan. I'm going to take about three tablespoons of water, and I'm going to take about three tablespoons of vinegar. I'm going to put in some minced shallots and two or three peppercorns. I'm going to put that over the heat, and I'm going to cook it until it's reduced by half. It won't take very long. I just want the flavor of that vinegar and the shallots and the pepper to be in the reduction. All right. I need three egg yolks. I've got two here already. Let me show you how to separate an egg if, if you don't know. Crack the egg and pull the shell apart over a bowl, and what will spill out first is the whites. Transfer the yolk back and forth between the two shells very, very carefully, and then transfer it to another bowl. So the white is here. I'm going to take these three yolks and put them right into a large bowl. For each of the yolks in this bowl, I usually use about a tablespoon of water. If you want, you can keep one half of the shell, and for each yolk, put a half a shell of water in. So one, two, and three. If you look over here, our reduction is just coming to a boil. And we're going to bring it down, reduce it until it's half the original volume. If you wanted to taste it, what you'll discover is that now we've got the vinegar with the flavor of pepper and shallots. And this reduction will carry that flavor right into our sauce. Just so our sauce isn't really chunky with shallots and peppercorns, I'm going to strain it into this bowl. Good. So now we've got egg yolks, the reduction, and a little bit of water. What I've set up here, I'm going to call a bain-marie, or a, a bath, Marie's bath. It's a hot water bath. The vapors coming off will heat the bowl on the bottom and give me gentle, gentle heat as I cook these egg yolks. I want to whip them the con constantly so that they don't get um, cooked. I want them to stay nice and creamy. As I whip, what you'll discover is they get really, really frothy. They will probably quadruple in volume. Keep them moving the entire time, because as they heat up, they get closer and closer to the point where they will become scrambled eggs, and that's not what we want at all. What we're going to be making here is an emulsified sauce, and there's powerful emulsifiers and egg yolks, and you'll see exactly what they can do for us in a second. Okay, you can see, very, very frothy now. Keep this moving. The water below can be just at a simmer. It doesn't have to be boiling hard, and it gives us the, the gentle heat that is ideal for making a hollandaise. The reason I know that this is starting to cook is not that it's frothy, but that it starts to get thick. It will get thicker and thicker, and then at one point what I will notice is that as the whip passes through this mixture, 
I'll be able to see the streaks of the bottom of the bowl. That tells me I've arrived. If you had a thermometer, it would be cooked to about 165 degrees. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. And if it ever seems like it's getting away from you, it's an easy thing just to pull it off the heat and catch up and then move it back over to the pot. Just reel briefly back and forth with a whip. If you're too aggressive, if you really work hard, you'll discover your arm gets really tired. So keep a nice light touch. Just back and forth, right from your wrist here, not your entire arm and shoulder. Now it's very foamy. It's gotten much lighter in color. You should be able to notice that as well. It's just starting to hold a little bit of a, a track as the whip passes through there. And by that I mean it's starting to get thicker, incrementally more and more thick. I would say start to finish, this is probably going to take you three minutes. And I don't know if you noticed, but we just saw the bottom of the bowl beginning to uh, show up. So I don't need any more heat. I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to take my towel and put it over this so that the heat is not quite so aggressive. Okay, you can see the bottom of the bowl. That's exactly as I want it. What I have here and I'm going to put it up front so it's a little easier to see, is clarified butter that's hot. Not so hot that it will continue to cook these eggs, but let's say about 150 degrees. And we're going to make an emulsion. Real briefly, an emulsion is when you take two things that don't like to mix, and you mix them together. There's two phases of an emulsion. One is a continuous phase, and the other is dispersed. So I'm dispersing fat into the continuous phase that is this egg yolk mixture, all right? And when you start with the hollandaise, when you start to establish an emulsion, you want to add the oil very, very slowly, or the, the clarified butter. So just drop by drop while you whip. And the clue that your emulsion is beginning to form is that right out of the chute, this will start to thicken. I can see it happening already. Don't add the oil or the, the butter very fast at all until you see this beginning to thicken. And then you can be a little more cavalier and add it slightly more quickly. For each of those egg yolks, I'm going to add about two ounces of clarified butter. But at no point should this mixture look anything but creamy. So if it starts looking oily, you're probably adding your butter too quickly. Keep it creamy by mixing it. About two ounces per yolk is right, but more than that, any less, and you may discover that your hollandaise tastes dry or uh, it coats your mouth, the egg yolk coats your mouth too completely. If you taste that, it's an indication that you probably need a little bit more butter. So here's the third introduction of two ounces. It's a very light sauce. Now, as long as I'm adding butter, I'm whipping. But if I stop adding, adding butter, I should stop whipping. I don't want to uh, whip the air that I've worked so hard to put in there out. So, while you're adding butter, you should be whipping. And when you're done adding butter, you can stop whipping. All right, so there's our hollandaise right there. It's got this wonderful sensual texture. It still needs to be seasoned. Uh, it would be very difficult to put pepper in here and get the flavor so, because it's so thick. So I like to use Tabasco, uh, just a couple of drops. Uh, if you were to taste it, what you would discover is that it tastes of butter. I can taste the 
the reduction that went in there earlier. Obviously, I can taste the Tabasco. It needs salt. And in a sauce like this, that's this thick, sometimes it's difficult for salt to dissolve. So when I add salt, I oftentimes add a little bit of liquid at the same time to help that salt begin to dissolve. The sauce needs some lemon anyway, so I'm using lemon here. What the lemon is doing is cutting through the richness of so much butter and so much egg yolk. Could still use a little bit more salt. And I'll add some more lemon juice. Uh, if it's already too tart and you can't add more lemon juice, just a little bit of water uh, can be added as well to help that dissolve. Recognize that it'll start to become thin if you add too much water. All right, there's our hollandaise done. Now, what I will tell you is that this sauce is a little bit problematic in that it has butter in it. So if it gets cold, the butter will congeal, the sauce will break into eggs and butter. If it gets too warm, the eggs will turn into scrambled eggs, and the sauce will break into scrambled eggs and butter. So you need to keep it warm, but not hot. What I'm going to do is take this pan, cool this water off slightly, and then set it aside for the time being. Uh, if you need to keep it for a long time, a thermos is a great way to go. Now we need to poach some eggs. Let me move this over, and we'll talk about poaching eggs real briefly. Beautiful. So I've got a sautoir. It's got water deep enough to uh, cover an egg. Usually when you poach, just the same way when you poach fish, you add a little bit of wine or uh, vinegar or lemon juice, I'm going to add a little bit of acid. And what that does is it changes the pH and helps protein to coagulate more quickly. I don't want my eggs to be colored, and so I'm going to use a distilled vinegar. And I'm going to add just a tablespoon or two per quart of liquid. And if you're curious to see what that tastes like, you should be able to just barely, barely taste the acidity. Okay, we'll set that aside. Temperature is important here. If you'll recall, we poach at about 160 degrees. And there's some clues. When you see steam coming off the top, you're at about 160 degrees. But there's one thing in particular that I like to see. I like to see a few bubbles on the bottom of the pan. Those bubbles will lift the egg up and keep it from the bottom. And so uh, I'm going to wait until I see that happening, although it's just beginning right here. I'm going to take an egg and crack it into a coffee cup. And the nice thing about that coffee cup is that it gives me a little handle to hold on to when I lower this egg into the liquid. You're going to need a plate with a towel to accept your eggs when they're done. And you're going to need a spoon or a skimmer like this that is perforated so that you can lift the egg out and drain the excess moisture off. While we're waiting for that to come up to temperature, I'm going to get things set up here. I've got some English muffins that are toasted with a little bit of ham on the top that has been warmed. I'm going to move everything out of the way. And I think we're just about at a point where we can start to poach. All right. Take this and lower it gently into the water. You don't want to disturb the white too much. I like to work close to the edge of the pan where I see some bubbles on the bottom and allow some of the hot water to flow in. And then gently tip this egg out against the side of the pan. That will kind of contain it and bring the white up and over the top. Take a look at this egg. It is firm, but the yolk is still soft. I can take it out and manipulate it. I'm going to slide it onto a towel. Here's the second that I put in, and I'm going to take that out as well. I'm going to turn the heat off. We won't need any more heat. 
and the third is good to go. All right. I'm going to take these eggs and just trim away the excess white and then gently move it over to the ham and English muffin. Same thing here. I'm going to trim away the excess white and transfer it over to the English muffin. And if you see here, I've got this hollandaise, which I'm just going to stir to loosen slightly. It should be nice and warm. And spoon that over the hot egg. And then finally, by way of garnish, how about just a little bit of chives? Eggs Benedict start to finish in about 15 minutes. Try it at home. All right, now we're going to cook some eggs. I'm just finishing up cracking eggs into a bowl. We're going to make scrambled eggs, and then I'd like to show you how to make an omelet or two. First thing we need to do is get these eggs cracked and break up their structure a little bit. Uh, once you no longer see the distinct whites and the yolks separate from one another, we're ready to move on. Good. So I've got a special pan here for cooking eggs, and you probably have similar pans at home. I think of these as egg pans. They're non-stick pans, and I use them for only eggs. I don't use them for anything else. I take really good care of them. I wash them by hand, and when they're all done, I put a paper towel in there, and I keep it for eggs and eggs alone. That way, the non-stick coating can stay in really good shape. It's a tremendous boon to have a non-stick pan. Even with a nonstick pan, we need some sort of fat. And so for our scrambled eggs, I'm going to introduce some butter into this pan. Now, I've got whole butter here. And whole butter will burn at a relatively low temperature, probably around 250 degrees, something like that. And so uh, I need to be careful with, with the heat of this pan. If I don't want to have to worry about it, I've also got clarified butter here where I've removed the buttermilk and the milk solids. Those are the pieces that burn so easily. And I'll use that clarified butter when I'm making omelets. So first thing that uh, we want to do is we want to get this butter hot and up to temperature, but no hotter than it can tolerate. When you see some sizzling in this pan, uh, basically, that's the water cooking out. As soon as the water has left the pan, you can run into problems with the butter burning. So have your food ready to go right in. It's nice to have a hot pan to put the eggs into because it cooks pretty quickly. So having that pan preheated is a nice idea. All right, I'm going to come over here and ladle in some eggs. And we'll put this back onto the heat. I want to season it with salt and pepper. And in these particular scrambled eggs, I'm going to put some chives. I have a spatula, which is great for scraping the cooked eggs from the hot surface of the pan. Just be sure that you have a spatula that's made from silicone. Silicone is heat tolerant, so it won't melt in this pan. If you have just a rubber spatula or a plastic spatula, you put it in there, and now you've got scrambled eggs with pieces of melted plastic. All right. So I'm going to turn the heat up so this goes a little bit quicker, but it's important that you cook this gently. I'm going to make these a little bit richer with the introduction of a tablespoon of cream for each egg. That will keep things nice and soft and moist. When you see it starting to turn to gentle, soft curds, turn the heat down again 
and keep this moving. Scrape everything off the side and keep it moving. Your goal is not to have a dry, curdy mass, but to have gentle curds that are nice and moist. When you start to scramble eggs, this should be where your attention is. And as you get closer and closer to scrambled eggs that are done, it's not a bad idea to pull this off the heat and use the residual heat that's left in the pan to carry them home. All right. Scrambled eggs should look nice and moist. Scrambled eggs should not look dry. They should look moist. They should look a little bit shiny. And we're off and running. Next, I'm going to make an omelet. And I have the pan hot. This time, I'm going to use clarified butter. And we need enough clarified butter to cover the bottom of the pan. I'm going to make sure the pan and the oil are hot before I begin. Usually, an omelet in a pan this size is about three eggs. So um, six ounces, give or take. And I've got a six ounce. I've got a four ounce ladle. So slightly more than uh, one ladle is what I'm after. I'm going to make this omelet, and we are going to roll it the way the French do when they make omelets. So again, a little salt and pepper. The silicone spatula. And you can hear this pan sizzling. And because it's sizzling, I know the pan is hot. I don't worry about the butter burning, but I do worry about keeping those eggs moving. This looks a lot like making scrambled eggs. But there's going to be one big difference, which I'll show you in just a second. When it's almost set, stop stirring. And what we're going to do is allow the bottom of this pan of scrambled eggs to actually set. OK? I'm going to pull it off the heat for just a second. And what we're going to introduce here is some cheese. And we'll sprinkle it all over the omelet. I've got Gruyere cheese. And then I've also got some mushrooms right here, sauteed mushrooms with thyme. Seems like a nice addition, a cheese and mushroom omelet. And one last little shot over the heat. And here's what I want you to do. You can do it with a towel in your hand if you like, but I want you to knock this. And what you'll see is that where you knock it, the egg slides free. Um, I usually do it without a towel. So you can see it sort of work its way over towards my hand. huh? That's where we're going to start. I'm going to take this spatula. And what I'm going to do is fold one third of this omelet over on itself, just like that. Okay, And then I'm going to knock it close to the edge of the pan. And I'm going to bring this right down to the plate. I'm going to have the pan close to the plate. And I'm just going to roll it over onto the following third, just like that. So that's how omelets are done. If you have a clean towel, and I just happen to have one here, it's entirely appropriate, I would say, to put a towel over there and reshape it. OK, so now we've got that omelet done. I'm going to make one more. And we're going to put ratatouille as a filling. In goes a little bit of clarified butter. I'll get the pan hot. We'll leave it right here, and I will ladle in the eggs. Those need to be seasoned with salt and pepper. And already they're starting to cook. The hot pan will make these eggs kind of fluffy. You see it sort of fluff up. It's important to keep it moving, but it's nice to take advantage of that hot pan. So keep it moving, keep it moving. You can always turn the temperature down if it's getting away from you, or pull the pan off the heat. Start just as though you're making scrambled eggs. And then, when it's almost set, Spread it out and let it heat again. I'm going to turn the heat off, let the residual heat in the pan 
carry this forward. On the inside, just a little bit of cheese. Not very much at all, because I've got another plan for this particular omelet. I'm gonna serve it with ratatouille. Let me bring it over here closer to the plate. I'm gonna free it from the pan. I'm going to fold the bottom third up, knock it so it's right against the edge of the pan, get it close to the plate, and roll it out. Now, let's say for argument's sake that you have a really nice, colorful filling which is exactly what I've got here. I've got a little vegetable stew. You can take a knife and you can cut an opening into this omelet. You can sort of cut it and spread it open just a little bit. And then you can take this hot filling and spoon it into the opening of the omelet. I think it gives you a nicer, more colorful appearance. It tells you exactly what's inside and it tempts your appetite even before you take your first bite. Maybe we'll top this with a little bit of chives and call it a day. We've got scrambled eggs, we have a rolled omelet with a filling on the inside, and we have a ratatouille omelet with cheese with the filling on the outside. Breakfast is entirely within your control right now. <laughs>